What's going on, y'all? You know who it is. Mr. Warmack, a.k.a. Low Rent, a.k.a. The Ignorant American, a.k.a. The Truth As You Know It, a.k.a. Dirty Business, a.k.a. The Jet Jaguar of YouTube. What's going on, y'all? You know who I am? By the intro alone, you heard, you know what I do, so I have to go in on stuff. Today, I'm kind of going in on myself. Today, I hear, I'm going to talk about how, uh, first of all, I get all these, when I make all these videos, I don't take into consideration nothing about anything about what I'm going to say in my preparation as far as my study into it. I'm not worried about your little comments, I'm not worried about your little feelings, I'm not worried about your little whining and crying. My main purpose when I do these videos is to get the information out there after I do my research and then put it out there and let the people decide. Now, majority of people like it, love it, however you want to say. But yes, I do get these wackos and crazies and crybabies, more or less. They come up with the, with the opinion of, or not the opinion, they come off with the question, where do I come off as with this? Or they say, where's my PhD? They say, where's your education? Uh, you're a nobody, you're a bastard, you're this, you're that. Look, let me tell you something. Most of my videos, if not all of my videos, because I do have a lot that are like this pure funny, like fuck comedy stuff like that that was early on but when I switched up my thing to doing what I wanted to do and I started talk, talking about topics that I wanted to talk about shit got on a crack and then the part the part of my videos that I think people don't like is well what they what they don't like about them are is uh, I think when I talk about subjects that touch a nerve on them it's because they know I'm telling the truth and I'm talking they think I'm talking about them personally I don't know them personally but what they what you, you got to understand is you're no different, I'm talking to everybody watching my videos. You're no different than somebody over in Europe or Africa or Asia or South America, you know, North America for that matter. We all have problems. We all have situations that we're in. What it, what it, what it is, is, is what degree it is. Like I said, I'm a black dude living in Columbus, Ohio. Now, I have the same problems as a white dude living in Cologne, Germany. It's just what degree of our problems. I mean, we have the same issues. We have the same. We both want to pay bills. We both. We have kids. We want our kids to succeed. We want to thrive. We want to grow old gracefully. We all have that. We all have the basics. What it is 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 what to to what degree. And a lot of you don't understand that because a lot of you have never left your comfort zone. Believe me, I've been out of my comfort zone a lot. I have. I've been like I said when I was younger. I was born in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. If anybody knows about Crown Heights, Brooklyn, you know it's about 90 to 90. Well, when I was there, it's 95% black. Then we moved back to Pennsylvania. When I say back to Pennsylvania, because my parents, it's like, it's like we, it's like my parents bounced around in like New York, Pennsylvania. So they were they were both from that area. So they moved back to Pennsylvania. We moved outside of Pittsburgh. Now get this, we're moving from I'm moving from a place that's 95% 90% black to a place that's 90% white. It, ain't, it wasn't the suburbs either for y'all being on that slick shit. I'm talking about this is like depression area shit. This is like depressed area. If you go look at the, a map, go Google a map. It's called uh, Economic Depression and all that. Look at the area. It's, it's the Rust Belt. And where I lived, the area, it was about, I'd say about 80%, 80% white, white folks. And like I said, I don't mean, like I said, I had, no, I had no problem with nobody. I mean, people picked on me, yeah. But, you know, I just had to deal with it. As I was coming up, you know, the old man laid it down. Like I got my first move there, I used to get in a lot of fights. But the old man laid the law down saying, look, man, you ain't, after you do what you do after high school, you're, you're a grown man, but under my roof, you know, it ain't going down like that. So a lot of people don't understand what I had to do is I had to bite my tongue on a lot of shit on people. So people would shit on me and I had to bite it because at the end of the day, I'm not worried about what these dudes were doing. I'm more concerned about catching hell from the old man. So after I graduated, like the old man said, I'm an old man. And then it was on a crack, and, and that was that. But back to the lecture at hand, what I'm talking about today is you guys and women, well, if you're, if you're acting like a woman, you both got pussy, so we just go there. But uh, I discuss, people will go like, they'll, 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 they'll get real touchy about it. And I, to me, I don't understand, because like to me, uh, unfortunately, no, here's what it is. Unfortunately for myself, I give people too much credit. 
and that, that that's my problem. Like I said, when, like even when I was had even when I had issues with other people, I would always overestimate my opponent. That way, it was the fear of losing that kept me from losing. I mean, not everybody's a winner all the time, but it was my fear of losing. I'm gonna say it again, my fear of losing keeps me from losing. So what I have to do is I have to be on I like with my videos or anything in life. I have to do that work that much harder than you. Like I tell people, you're not going to outwork me. You may have, you may be richer than me. You may have more women than me. I got that one. You may have a better life than me, but you're not going to outwork me to get those things. You're not you're not just going to. A lot of you have like and here, here's the problem. A lot of you have gifts that were man or God or however. You have gifts that you were given. And you abuse the hell out of your gifts so bad that now you want to use your gifts and now everybody don't want to mess with you. Like, like I'm going to use the example of a lot of these people on Facebook, well, not Facebook, on YouTube. There's a lot of people on YouTube who were great orators and they had decent points. Not good points, they had decent points. But the problem was with a lot of these dudes on YouTube was they were talking some bullshit mixed in with the truth. And they weren't just talking some bullshit at, after a while. When they saw the people were getting drawn in, they were mixing a lot of bullshit with a lot of facts. And then dudes like me would come around and be like, hey man, you know, what you're saying that ain't true. You know, they're like, they were being political about it, and then they were getting mad at me for calling them out. I'm like, well, you're on YouTube. If you want to be like, what do you think? I'm supposed to agree with everything you say? Now, friends are not. Like, like, I see some beefs going on YouTube, and to me, I'm like, what's the big deal? There should be no crime. If you can't have your opinion, stand and have your opinion checked, what type, what type of dude are you? You ain't, like I said, you ain't a dude in my eyes. You so you want some other shit. If you can't have your opinion checked, like I said, people have checked my opinion before. But at the end of the day, I don't care less because I stand by what I say. I'm a man about my situations. I stand what I say and I do what I say. And I got to tell people, don't listen to what these people do. Don't believe by what they tell you. Believe by what they do. Like, if they say something and it sounds good, that's okay. But that's, that's the problem with a lot of people on Facebook and on YouTube. You can tell people you do something and people are like, oh, they're doing it. But like what you see is different. But I think what it is is you, you want to believe in them so much that you want to, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt and say, so-and-so is doing this. But when, you, when deep down inside, you really know they're not doing it. It's like these Facebook models and these Facebook hustlers. For the life of me, and I've been on this kick on Facebook whenever any chick asks me. I don't understand how you can be a model on Facebook and give away all the every picture you give away for free. And like I like I tell like this one chick goes, What about if your your girlfriend, old lady, wife, whatever? I said, number one, if if she was giving away pictures for free, some chick wouldn't be me with me. She wouldn't be with me. That's how it is. If I'm with a chick that's a model, She's doing it for pay. She's doing it for the gas bill. She's doing it for vacation money. She's doing it for an electric bill. She's doing it to put clothes on her back from Macy's. She's doing it because we're going to do stuff with this money. She's not just doing it just to get a couple likes. And now she's not getting it from. She's not doing it to get a couple likes from dudes that don't have money. Cause see, if, if everybody see a lot of these dudes on like Facebook, especially, they wear nothing but Air Force Ones. They wear and they wear and their their clothes are fake. So if they were all that fake stuff, where are they getting the money to pay you off? That's why I say I can't understand why you like a lot of you chicks. You go on that fuck dumb shit to me. You you just want to do it for likes and okays. Well, you don't need a, you don't need Facebook. You need to see the doctor. That's what you need to see. Cause somewhere in your psyche, you don't feel that you're good enough. You need to be told every five minutes that you're good looking. You need somebody to hit a like instead of somebody hitting a cash register sign. You need to have a PayPal sign on your website or something. That's like another thing. And like that's like nowadays you can't call shit out. Like, I'll give you an example. There's these there's these chicks, they'll have they'll have contests, thick chicks. Like on some of my groups on Facebook have contests. And what kills me about this is a lot of you simps out there letting this shit go by. You guys let every fat chick and her sister who looks who looks like they need to be on Jenny Craig and call himself thick. Look, I love a thick chick, don't get me wrong. I'm in love, my thick chicks are, are the top chicks I go after, and after that there's a sliding scale. I don't mind a chick with little meaner bones either. Don't get me wrong. 
But what you're not gonna get me as, you're not gonna get some fucking sweat hog, Michelin man looking bitch, and you're gonna call her thick in front of me. Cause I'll be like, you're fucking crazy. And then when you call this shit out, oh, you're a hater. Motherfucker, you're fat. Look, there's times of the year. Not that this was one of them, as you can tell. There's times of the year where I'm fat. I'm overweight. It's facts. What am I gonna do? Cry about it? No, but you can't call this shit out. That's like these Facebook dudes. I had a one discussion with them. They, we, we, one of our topics were wearing boat, bootleg gear. And I told them, I said, look, man, you can wear bootleg gear if you mix it up, but don't make bootleg gear your whole accessories. You know, don't make it your your, your outerwear. Don't make don't go to the club all day in bootleg gear. And they were like, well, well, why we feel comfortable? I said, because you guys wearing bootleg gear are the biggest shit talkers. And if you, back in the day, you talk shit on us. I'm talking about your fucking gear. I'm like, I know you wearing true, look man, here's how you know they're wearing bootleg gear. You wear true religion pants every day. If you see somebody wearing true religion pants to work, and this motherfucker asking you for lunch money, that shit's bootleg. That's not real, it's not real cause unless you just that fucking stupid and ignorant to, 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 to buy a pair of true religion pants and go hungry, that's, hey, that's your business, but more than likely that shit is fake. And like I said, you can mix the fake with the real. Hey, I, I understand the economic times. But at the same time, don't be all fake because that is, you're just fake. You know what I mean? And that's where I, I, I come, because I think what it is is I come off so passionate about a lot of stuff. And I, don't want, I won't change my mind on anything, but I say. Now, I may look at something from a, from a different set of, from a different standpoint. Like I said, I got videos on fibromyalgia, and these people swear that they're, they're like, like the sickest people on earth. You know, never mind there's a kid with cancer down now at Children's Hospital. You can't get out of bed because your fucking back hurts. That takes precedent. Stuff like that, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to waver on my position. But a lot of you need to understand that I'm not talking personally about you. It's just that you're no different. I probably met dudes or females just like you. Name, color, race, all that may be different. The same thing, but it's just different, you know, different situation. That's all it is. Don't, don't take one of my videos personal. If it stings, it causes, that's, that's, the, that's being stung by the truth. Like I said, I was, this is the way I was talked to when I was coming up. It, it was like, it, and it was like, it was one of the deals where this is how it is. So, don't cry and whine, just take your medicine like a man or woman and go about your life. And quit crying about being a victim when the only victim you are is because you want to be a victim. Uh, and I'm going, I'm about to go off on this one, so I'm going to make another video, but I'm going to just keep the same one going. These victims are another thing that kill me. Because there's all these victim crying on you. If you look at YouTube, we're all victims, okay? We're victims, you're a victim, he's a victim, she's a victim. Wouldn't you like to be a victim too? But other than that, if you remember that Coca-Cola commercial, you know what I was getting about. But again, I'm digressing, so let's go back to lecture that. How are you, as a victim, supposed to lead? There's no way in hell that a victim can lead. Now, I know that people are just victims of this, victims of that, that are leaders. They're not victims anymore. You want to watch? Because they, they overcame their fear of being a victim. They decided to let their past go. They decided to quit being a victim. They decided to do something about their life and take charge of their life. A lot of you victims out here, especially YouTube, YouTube scammers are, are, are the best ones because we watch your videos and, and I'm serious, we, we sit here and we laugh. Because you'll have somebody say, I'm a victim but and I'm going to lead you. I'm like, no, you're not going to lead anything. And the only thing you can lead is somebody to the doctor to talk about their problem. Because you're not helping the situation, you're making the situation worse. And that's why I go to people and I tell them, like, listen to some of these clowns on YouTube. Like I said, a lot of these people on YouTube, they don't get past the sniff test with me because what they're saying is bullshit. I just don't happen to make videos no more on people because people took it personal because people would make videos on me. And I got to the point where if you feel a certain by the way, it's, like I said, I'm, a, I'm not out above nobody. I'm not no high, great power. But if you're going to make videos on me, prepare to deal with that wrath that comes with it. Like, if you make a video about me, make sure everything you fucking say is completely 100. Make sure it passes the sniff test. 
And if, if what you say, if what 100% of the time you say is not true, you know what I do. You know, it got to the point people killed my one channel, I had a channel or something, you know, the truth is you know it. That was the banger channel. That was the channel that they were coming at me with. And I was like, I know who, I kind of I kind of guessed who, who has killed that channel. Can't say for sure, so, but that's why I let that go. But that was my banger channel. That was the channel where somebody mentioned my name, where somebody indirectly tried to be slick, because like I said, I'm the forefather of that one, so you can't, you, you can't talk under your breath with me and not me know, not known about it. I would get my channel and I'd go in on it. And I'd show you, I'd pick apart the lies that they're saying. I would, and I would use their own, I would use their own videos. Look up, uh, here's a term you should look up. What's that use? Fair use. There's a term called fair use. A lot of people can use, like, even if you're going to get me, you can pick apart things in my video that I'm saying. But it's, it's, it's when you pick apart things in people's videos and you twist the words around that I have a problem with. But if you're going to pick apart my videos using fair use and say, hey, this is where, this is that, I can't do nothing. I had no problem with it. But it's when they were like trying to twist the words I was saying to fit their video. And I was like, well, since you're doing that, I'm going after your AdSense. And then it just, just it, it got bad because I was, I'm not going to lie, I was going after AdSense. I was, like I said, I, me, myself, I don't survive off YouTube money. I know a lot of people were surviving off of YouTube money. The, the, I knew the people that were coming after me were surviving off of YouTube money. So I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make fun of you. I'm not going to roast you. I'm going after your AdSense. And I started killing them. I would bring up, here's what they're saying, and here's what they're at. And people were looking at them like, people were looking at them strange now. Like, I t let me tell you this. If there's people on YouTube who had relationships with other people on YouTube, and these were big guys. Now all of a sudden they're nobodies. How's that happen? How can't you keep that ball rolling? If you have a movement going on YouTube and you're to the point where you're pretty big, you're you're known, how do you let that momentum stop? You wanna know how you let the momentum stop? Because you only thought about yourself. Because if a lot of you were down for this, like a lot of you would be like teaming up with like the one time they had the what was that what the super friend or the fuck they were? There was a group of guys who had a lot of views who teamed up together and they couldn't keep that momentum going you want to know why because they were all were phony to begin with because like I said look I don't care if me and one of these dudes over here have a problem at the end of the day it's about money if we're working together and that's how we look at it I'm not that I have a problem with anybody over there so calm down but I'm just saying if we did they like we have disagreements but at the end of the day it's like we're making a buck out of it if the answer is yes then it's that Fuck you, fuck your opinion. And that's what a lot of you people aren't on. A lot of you people are on some real childish shit where, well, I don't agree with you, or do you want to flag a video? As you can tell, my videos have been flagged, but luckily I'm signed. And another thing is I'm not signed to anybody in America, by the way. So whenever you go try to do what you do, I'm international. And I keep calling myself Mr. International because I'm international. I don't have to tell you, I don't have to tell people that like, like there's people on there saying, I get videos on, I get letters from Egypt, I get letters, look, you're on the internet, internet's that international, but I'm literally international by who is helping me along the process. I am actually working internationally, that's why I'm not concerned about them this, I'll do a little something about America, this and that, but that's why I'm not concerned, like as one guy said, I'm not concerned with pro-black stuff. I have a bigger cause in life than pro-black stuff. You want to know why? But you can talk pro-black until you, you're blue in the face. Unless you got another system to come up with, you're going to live with the dominant system. And none of y'all ain't got the money to start with because none of y'all ain't trying to get the money to start with. So why am I going to keep talking about it? You know what you have to do. You don't want to do it. But other than that, I'm sorry. I, I apologize because I made this video a little bit longer. I condensed like three videos into one, but I'm so pa I'm just passionate about what I talk about. Like I said, you look at my videos, and people want to complain about like some of my videos, but you weren't complaining, and I gave you that like, free information about how to survive for six months. Just saying, all right, peace.